Hi, I'm Katie Hacker, the host of Season 2700 of Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels, A Sense of Place. Learn how our surroundings influence design, whether exotic locales or right in our own backyards. Whether you're an armchair traveler or actually pack your bags, inspiration comes from both outside and inside as we establish our own sense of place with Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels. Our theme for this episode is By the Sea. What could be more inspiring than the sights and sounds of the ocean that evoke a sense of calm? Tammy Hahnemann is up first with a metal clay project inspired by her love for the sea. Then meet Sarah Ayler for a sea bead revolution featuring the calming colors of blue and green. Join us today for By the Sea. Where you design, your surroundings, and your travel help you to develop a sense of place. The palette and cultural influences inherent in your jewelry. Travel to the sea today with Tammy Hahnemann. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you very much. It's great Thanks to for be being here. here. Thank you so much. These are beautiful pieces. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I love them, and I think they're even easy to create, which makes them even better, right? I think so. I think they're easy, and I think they're really um, wonderful to take the time to really escape and make something that you really love wearing. I love this one especially that has the sea shot, sea um, star. Starfish, yeah. Sea star, because you're from the Midwest. <laughs> starfish. Is that regional? I didn't know that. <laughs> and then we've got some sea shapes over here. This is really fun. And I also love the piece in front that is kind of an underwater kelp field. Yeah, that's, how, that's what I thought of it when I was making it and adding that little bit of flourish. It was fun. They're great. How do we get started? Thank you. All right. Well, so with everything that I do in metal clay, really the base is just to start by treating your material. So the surface has been treated, my um, texture mats have been treated, and all of the tools in my hands so that nothing sticks. No guarantees, but at least it helps release the material. And we're going to work with metal clay. And metal clay is a material that's made with fine silver particles. So this will be um, fine silver when it's fired. I think it's an alchemy project. You know, you take this lump and turn it into something pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. And then you put it in the kiln and it becomes really, truly beautiful. Yeah. We're just gonna roll it out. This is about a four card thickness. We, we generally speak in terms of cards just because that's um, a universal measurement. And I'm gonna try to get a general shape that I'm looking for so that I have enough width and length. And then what I'll do is transfer it to one of these textures. Okay, and the conditioner that you put over everything, there are different types. That is you correct. You just wanna find one that's um, made for the type of metal clay that you're using. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and so then what I'm gonna do now is roll it a little thinner, and then that'll give it the texture. It'll also make the piece, obviously, a little bigger, because it'll get a little longer. And then, because everything's been treated, it should just release really easily. Just slide these out of the way. Turn that over. Uh, it didn't release perfectly, but it's good enough. It's usable. It's usable. Okay. Okay, so now you can cut this any way you want. You can freeform it and but I'm gonna use a template, because what we're going for today, you wanna to be a little bit more precise. Well, you're making that domed bead, so the front and the back yeah. both have kind of a, a dome shape to them, right? Correct. And you want them to be the same size, so it's nice when you use a template, you're sure to get the same size. And I'm just using a really fine pick to cut that out. Sometimes if I don't have my pick handy, you can even use a beading needle. You know, something that's got oh, okay. a really nice, sharp, fine point. And then I'll just pull off this excess and tuck it in to the plastic wrap so that it stays fresh. And then to get the dome shape, I put it onto a form. So I'll just release that from this nonstick sheet and I'll put it onto the form over here. Nice. And then I just kind of gently press the edges down well, it makes sense to me that if you get all of this stuff out and you're ready to go, you might as well make a bunch. Yep. 
and they don't all turn out perfectly. So then you can kind of pair up the two that match the best. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. 